Hi there. This one is on the Canterville Ghost. This long text in your syllabus was meant for you to read. And I really wish you would read the Canterville Ghost on your own. But since many of you have informed me that you don't have the text with you, so reading stories on our own and working with our imagination is far better than listening to someone retelling the story. Anyhow, The Canterville Ghost is a typical Victorian comedy. It is light-hearted, witty, and farcical. Farcical means imaginatively unreal where Wilde uses humor to entertain his readers. The story begins with Mr. Hiram B. Otis, an American minister, uh, coming to buy the Canterville Chase. He is a practical and down-to-earth American minister who comes to buy the Canterville Chase and Lord Canterville is the original owner of the chase. However, being a man of integrity, Lord Canterville warned uh, Mr. Hiram Otis that there the house is haunted. Lord Canterville also informed Mr. Otis that they did not care to live in that house ever since the Canterville ghost scared and terrified his grand aunt, the Dowager Duchess of Bolton, into a fit by placing two skeleton hands over her shoulder while she was in her dressing room. The ghost also had been seen by several other family members, including the rector of the parish, Reverend Augustus Dampier. Even the servants refused to stay later on. Lady Canterville refused to stay in the house after hearing noises coming from the library. Even after hearing all this, the minister, Mr. Hiram Otis, said that it's fine, I'll take the furniture and the ghost at a price, at a valuation. Mr. Hiram B. Otis is someone who believes that money can buy anything and everything. He said that I come from a modern world where money can buy anything. We have these young rich people who are painting the world, painting the old world red. Painting the old world red meaning spending money lavishly. Lord Canterville thinks that Mr. Otis does not understand the seriousness of this haunted property. So he tells him that if you don't have any problem with the ghost then it's fine. But let me warn you that when someone from the family is about to die, we have seen the ghost appear. But the minister just simply went on to say that, yeah, and so also, and so also the doctor, family doctor appears before anybody dies. When someone is sick, the doctor appears, the sickness is serious, the person dies. So according to him, ghost appearing before somebody dies, doctor appearing before somebody dies. It's just same. Lord Canterville could not convince Mr. Otis and so he just said, okay, but remember I warned you. His wife, Mrs. Otis, also known as Miss Lucretia R. Tappen of West 53rd Street. She was lively and full of energy. During her time, the American ladies believed that uh, to look beautiful, you need to look sickly, ill and white as, as though you have lost so much blood and thin and sickly, weak. But Mrs. Otis did not fall into the trap of trend of fashion or beauty. She was fit and very much active. The eldest son was called Washington. Mr. and Mrs. Otis named their son Washington out of patriotism. But 
Washington turned out to be a wonderful gambler and a great dancer, Virginia E. Otis. She was a little girl of 15 years lit and lovely as a fawn and with a fine freedom she was an amazing Amazon or, or horse rider. The youngest were the twins who were also called the stars and stripes because they got swished by the elders for being naughty. Sometimes they got injured while playing, sometimes they got beaten up by their elders, sometimes they got scolded, so they were called the Stars and Stripes. They were also called the True Republicans because they were the only ones in the family who enjoyed full freedom. Republicans are a group of American political party that patronizes freedom. So Oscar Wilde calls them the only true Republicans in the family. It was a lovely July evening when they moved in, but as they reached the avenue of Canterville Chase, the sky became overshadowed with a dark cloud. A great flight of rooks flew overhead silently and some big drops of rain fell over their head. Mrs. Amne was there to receive them at the door. As they went inside the Canterville chase and looked around, Mrs. Otis saw a dark red stain on the floor. She said, uh, I'm afraid something is spilled here. Mrs. Amne replied, yes. Blood has been spilled in that spot. But Mrs. Otis said that she did not at all want a blood stain in her sitting room. Mrs. Omni continued, It is the blood of Lady Eleanor de Canterville, murdered by her husband in 1575. Sir Simon lived for another nine years and then disappeared mysteriously. His body was never found, but his guilty spirit roams this Canterville chase even today. This blood stain has become very popular among the tourists, but cannot be removed. Washington Otis said, Nonsense! Pinkerton's champion stain remover and Paragon detergent will clean it up in no time. And he bent down to wipe it and it was clean. I knew Pinkerton would do it, but no sooner did he say those words and there was a flash of lightning that lit up the somber room followed by a thunder and Mrs. Omni fainted. Mr. Otis lighting up his cigar said, what a monstrous climate. Mrs. Otis holding Mrs. Omni said, my dear Hiram, what do we do with a woman that faints? Charge her for fainting, said Mr. Otis. No sooner did he say those words and Mrs. Omni got up. Maybe she heard what they said. This is another example that shows that for Mr. Otis, he believed that money can buy everything and anything. According to him, money can solve any problem. Mrs. Omni continued saying that, I have seen things that makes any Christian here stand and then she walked off. Mr. Roti started to believe that maybe ghosts do exist, maybe I was wrong and nothing more than that. Mrs. Otis, after looking at the blood stain appear again and again, she became curious. As lively and active that she was, she wanted to know more about the psychical activities and nothing more. And the twins, seeing the color change every day, they would bet on what color the stain would be the next day. Every morning when they wake up, they would rush down to check who was right. For them, it became something to play with. Except little Virginia, of course. So you see, the whole Otis family have the same mentality about supernatural activities.
they either think that these things are all normal or they think that the supernatural activities are not supernatural at all they are very practical kind of people even during supper they would talk about the different accent of Americans and the British the difference between the New Yorkers and the people living in London they talked about the railway services and they talked about different popular people and other things but nothing about Sir Simon or the Canterville ghost then one night they retired to bed at 11 o'clock after going to bed at 11 o'clock at night Mr. Otis woke up because he thought he heard the sound of metal clanking he got up he looked at his watch and it was one o'clock he checked if he had fever he was okay he checked his pulses it was normal and it was not just clanking of metal he even heard footsteps along with it and it seemed to come nearer and nearer to him so he light up the candle took a small bottle that was near him and decided to go out and as he went out and opened the door right in front of him was a an old man his hair was his hair was dirty and gray and hung over his shoulders and his sh and and his dress was old fashioned and dirty and ragged and torn and his eyes seemed to be burning like coal and on his wrist and his ankles were metal chains my dear sir i really i really must insist on your oiling those metal chains this is Tammany Rising Sun Lubricator it is said to be very effective and has many wonderful testimonies i will keep it here for you if you need more you can ask me anytime you could apply this on your chains and walk wherever you like and it won't disturb other people anymore saying so mr otis closed the door and went to bed the ghost stood there for some time in silent and disbelief and then he grew violently angry and smashed the bottle on the floor flew up the stairs and when he reached up there a door opened and he saw two white two small white figures and then suddenly a pillow was thrown at him at this he got frightened and then he disappeared never in his career of 300 years had he ever felt so humiliated and insulted he rushed to the corner room where he existed and thought about what happened that night he was so proud of his achievements there were so many achievements in his life number one the please remember these achievements Number one, he scared the Dowager Duchess of Bolton by placing the skeleton over his shoulder. We heard about it earlier. Secondly, he scared the rector of the parish, doing nothing but just blowing off his candle. Thirdly, he scared the four housemaids who were busy cleaning and he grinned from behind the window curtain and these four maids were scared for the achievement all mad all madam tremulac woke up one morning to find that a skeleton was sitting reading her diary it scared her so much that she dedicated her life to the work of the church his fifth achievement was when he made the cheater Lord Canterville swallow and choke on the knave of diamonds because he used that very card to cheat Charles James Fox 
sixth achievement was how he made the butler shoot himself because he saw a green hand tapping on the window. Seventh achievement was the Lady Strutfield who had to who was forced to wear a velvet band around her neck to hide the mark of the five fingers burned on her neck. And after all these achievements, some Americans suddenly come in and then take away his pride. He was hurt, deeply hurt, because they offered him Tammany Rising Sun lubricator to apply on his chains and throwing pillows at him. He was going to take his revenge. So what was his plan and how, how did he plan to take his revenge? Read on to find out or wait for my next video. And don't forget to make the notes of everything that I will be mentioning. See you in the Canderville Ghost Part 2.